Hello, my name is Denise Renner, and I want to welcome you to the School of Cinderella. Now, you might be saying, now, what is the School of Cinderella? Well, the School of Cinderella are some teachings and classes that I've been teaching for years on marriage, and really it's directed to women to know how much power they have in their own hearts and in their own soul and through the Holy Spirit to bring into their homes. And Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1 says, and I show it to you in my Bible, it says, the wise woman builds up her house, but the foolish one tears it down with her own hands. Well, this verse is really the inspiration to this teaching. Because when I saw this verse, I saw the amazing power that women have. We have power, women, to either build up our homes or to tear down our homes. And when I saw that verse, I thought, oh, Lord, the responsibility that you've given women. It's, there's no middle ground. It's either we're building up or we're tearing down. And you say, well, I don't want to tear my house down. And I know you don't want to tear your house down. If you're watching me right now, if you're taking a part of School Cinderella, in fact, I'm going to proclaim over you right now that you are a wise woman, that you are looking for instruction, that you haven't said to yourself, well, I know everything and she can't teach me anything and I'm fine. Actually, the Bible calls that kind of a person who says, I don't need any instruction. The Bible calls that kind of a person a fool. And I know that's not you because you're with me right now. And the responsibility, ladies, that we have from the Holy Scriptures to either build up or we could be tearing down. So what's the difference in building up and tearing down? Well, it's wisdom. The wise woman builds up her house and the foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. And God is saying that you and I are responsible for our choice. And that's what I have committed all these lessons to, is helping you to see how you can build up your home. And several years ago, I wrote a book called Who Stole Cinderella? Well, this book contains in it a lot of instruction and wisdom of how we can build up our homes. And I'm just going to start with chapter one because I hope you get this book and you can go with me through these videos with the book. But in chapter one, I open up to my own story because several, several years ago, more, more than two decades ago, I started learning that there were things that in my character, in my own marriage, that I needed to make improvement about that I needed to learn how to respect my own husband. If you would have asked me, I would have said, well, of course I respect my husband. But as I began to study, like you're doing right now, I began to say, God, help me respect my husband. And I began to search the scriptures, begin to pray. I began to seek him on how I could respect my husband more. And I knew that if I could respect him, I would be on the way to building up my house. So I'm going to start with my story. And my story is really started over 20 years ago. And uh, we had moved from America and we had moved to Latvia. Well, this was a huge assignment, especially for my husband. I mean, we had three young boys. Joel was our youngest. He was two. Uh, Philip was our middle son. He was six. And Paul, our oldest son, was eight. And I was in charge of the praise and worship. And, and, and I was on TV sometimes with Rick. And we were, 
we were doing all we could to fulfill the call that God had placed on us. But the call that God had placed on Rick was so huge. And at the time, I didn't really understand that. And I, I had my own insecurities and my own faults, just as you do when you get married, when you walk down the aisle and you say, I do, to your husband. You're, you're saying, I do, to his faults and insecurities and the things that are missing in him. And he's saying, I do, to the things that are inside of you that are also missing and the faults inside of you. And so when we moved to Latvia, it was like a time that revealed those insecurities that were inside of me. Because I was in a country, I didn't speak the language, I didn't have very many friends, because they all spoke Russian. And so it was a really hard time for me. And I was wanting to put dependence upon Rick that actually he couldn't do. There's no way he could fulfill what I was expecting of him. And, and I was finding myself really emotionally struggling because I didn't have any friends. And then because, because I was so uh, struggling and wanted Rick to be more attentive, but he couldn't be because he was so overwhelmed by his own position that I even found myself resentful. And, you know, ladies, I just want, I've learned so much since that time. I've learned since that time that the Bible says, uh, and I want to read it to you. It's in Psalm, and it's in, it's in chapter 18. And it says that, it says in verse 1, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Nowhere in that scripture does it say that your husband is your strength or your husband is your rock or your husband is your deliverer or your husband is the one who is the horn of your salvation or your stronghold. It doesn't say that anywhere. It says that the Lord is your rock. It says that the Lord is your strength. And at that time, I didn't know that. I didn't know that my dependence needed to be on God and not on Rick. And when I made that, when I saw what I was doing, well, first, when you're having problems, you know, you want something and you can't have it, or you want somebody to change and they won't change, then you've got to find answers. So I was looking in the word of God, and this was a very big help for me, that I learned that Rick was not my rock, he was not my fortress, he's not the horn of my salvation, and neither is your husband. And as we go through our marriage, ladies, we need to be secure in ourselves, not depending on our husband all the time and that depending on Jesus. And sometimes, ladies, we even want our husband to fill a place in our heart that only Jesus can fulfill. And Jesus wants us to grow up in him and not always be depending on somebody else. And so I was being challenged in this way. But being challenged in this way, I found myself that I had great resentment towards my husband. Why? Because he, I expected him to do something that he couldn't do. He could not fulfill the desires of my heart. And at that point, I knew that I had to seek the Lord. And I began seeking him and seeking him. And, and he showed me that he was the rock. But coming to that place, 
I had all kinds of things going on in my body. I had symptoms going on in my body. Of uh, My hands were cold all the time. Not just, not just cold, but painfully cold. My feet were cold. Not just cold, but painfully cold. And my face began to be cold also. I began to have great fear. And I even had panic, panic attacks. That's so horrible because I thought to myself, I'm a Christian. I'm a leader. I'm not supposed to be struggling like this. But I had resentment and unforgiveness in my heart towards my husband. And that was opening the door for all this sickness and panic and fear to start overcoming me. I was on my journey to find the answer. I knew that the answer was God, but I didn't know what the answer was. I really didn't even know that I even had unforgiveness in my heart. I just figured that Rick needed to change. I just figured he's the one that needed to change. And ladies, I learned that if we're going to find help, we're going to have to quit blaming others and ask God about ourselves. And I began to ask God, God, what is it that I need to change? Crying out to him day and night. My, my mind, my eyes were in the word of God. I was seeking him. I knew I knew that this was the answer. I knew he had the answer. Like some of you listening to me right now, I'm sure that you're thinking, I know that God's the answer for my marriage problems. I know he's the answer for me, but, but I just don't know how. And ladies, that's why I'm coming to you. Because I have compassion. Because I have been in a very terrible place with bitterness and unforgiveness and didn't know how to get out. So I was in this place with this pain and with this panic. And then I began, I was seeking him and seeking him and seeking him. And I knew that the answer wasn't to blame Rick, but I didn't know how to stop. Well, we were traveling one, one uh, summer actually with all of our whole family and and I was having all these symptoms and all this fear and we ended up going to this one church and this man of God came up to me and he said you are a very sensitive person and he said but you have some really broken places in your heart and in 24 hours you're going to wake up in a different world well <laughs> Ladies, in those 24 hours, I was able to see my situation from another perspective. And I was able to see that I needed to forgive. That I was, was responsible for what was going on inside of me. And that I needed to extend forgiveness. Well, I did that, and I am happy to tell you that I woke up the next morning. I woke up the next morning, and I was in a different world, just like the man of God said. I woke up. My hands were normal. My feet was normal. My mind was normal. I was totally free, and I want you to be free. We're going to have lessons where I only talk about forgiveness. But I wanted to share my story with you. Because going through that and then seeing the things that needed to change in me, I thought, you know, I love women so much. I love English-speaking women. I love Russian-speaking women. I love women because I know that God has placed in us so much power 
power to build up our homes, power to strengthen our children, power to build up our husbands, power to do amazing things with our mind and with our gifts and with our energy, power to have influence in powerful places and high places. And I wanted women just like you. I wanted women to be free. I want them not to be hung up in unforgiveness and bitterness and blaming others and, and, and thinking it's all others' fault that I'm in this place, but to have tools so that they can get out of that place. You know, I'm really teaching to you from my book, Who Stole Cinderella? I want to talk to you about another thing that happens which is so bad for women for whatever reason it happens. But when we start having some kind of a problem and we don't have anybody to share it with or we can't open our heart or we don't, we can't trust somebody else, we fall into a trap of isolation. I was in that trap. Before I got free, I was in the trap of isolation. What is the trap of isolation? Well, if you're in it, you know what it is. It's a place where you're by yourself. You want to escape, but you can't escape yourself. It's a place where in your own mind, it's like a, a little hamster in a cage, just going around and around and around and around with the same thoughts over and over again. If I say this, he'll say that. If I don't say this, he won't say that. If I do this, he might do that. Oh, if I, what if he does that? I mean, it's thoughts, thoughts and thoughts and thoughts that have no conclusion and they just continue. And that trap of isolation where you think, Nobody will understand me or nobody even has ever gone through what I'm going through. Well, I want to tell you that's a lie of the devil because the Bible says that every temptation, every temptation known to man, ha it comes on all men. We're all tempted in the same way. That scripture also says that there is a way of escape. So if you're in isolation, there's a way of escape. And so I was in that trap. And the way of escape is to open your heart. You know, right now, you have the opportunity to communicating with your counselor. You could, could tell your counselor, I've never told anybody this before. We've been doing these classes now for several years, and we get testimonies that say to the counselor, I've never told anyone this in my whole life. And as they open that place, because la ladies, that place of isolation, it's a dark place. It's a secret place. And as long as it's dark, you have to stay there because there's no light. But when you can open your heart and you can say to another woman, this happened to me, or I'm struggling with this, or I, uh, this, I can't deal with this. Do you have any wisdom for me? What does the Bible say? Can you help me? I'm a new believer. I really don't know what to do. I just find myself doing the same things to my husband that I saw my mother do to my father. And it's not working. I need help. See, that's opening up that place of isolation. That is letting, when you tell somebody, you're letting light come in and shine on your darkness. It says in James that we are to confess our faults one to another, that we may be healed. You see, the Bible, the Bible has all of this wisdom for us. And that's part of my responsibility is to dig in here and to find some answers and to share them with you. And so 
in James, it says that, I'm paraphrasing now, but if we open that dark place, light will come into that dark place. If you confess your faults one to another, someone you trust, light will come into that darkness and that trap of isolation you will come out of. That trap of isolation, I am convinced many people who have mental challenges are in a trap of isolation. They think that this is all, is this all my life is about, is my problems and my trials and no answers? No, it's not. Open your heart. Tell someone. Tell someone. Share what's going on. Somebody you trust. And that's the first step to getting out of the trap of isolation. You know, I'm reading from my book. And I want to read you a sentence that I think is amazing. Because it's right on my book and I don't see any better way to say it. Because we need the Holy Spirit. And this is what I wrote. We need the master artist to paint on the canvas of our soul the answers and instructions we need to take us through our journey without becoming self-focused and believing the wrong things. We need him. We need him to paint different pictures on our heart so that we don't just see our problems, but we start to see answers for our problems. And that's what the School of Cinderella is all about, is, is wanting to, I want to come inside. You know, we had so many testimonies through the years, and it's like when they give their testimony, it's like the teaching of God's Word and the love of that counselor. It just went right into the privacy of that woman's heart and said, let me help you. And I'm here to help you. I want to open the Word of God to you. That's what the School of Cinderella is all about. You know, God wants us to not look at our life through like glasses of darkness, but he wants for light to come in there. Not that we look and say, oh, everything, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong. Oh, it's so easy to feel that way. But when you get the light of God's word, it shines on our darkness. You know, the Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Well, well, what does that mean practically? That means that when you and I were walking on a dark path, and oh, let me tell you, it happens. Because we live in a fallen world. We're not perfect. The people we're around aren't perfect. And this world is not perfect. The world has fallen. So bad things happen to good people. So what do we do with all this negative things that can happen and fear that can try to take over? The Word of God. Because the Word of God says about itself that when we take His Word, it shines a light right onto our dark path. And that's what I want to do for you, is I want to open the Word of God to you It through the school of Cinderella. We don't want to see ourselves as victims. No, you're not a victim. You're not a victim of your circumstance. Jesus said in his Word that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. I've had so many testimonies of women who have said, I heard this teaching and I saw that I'm really not a victim, that I have the power of God inside of me, that I can be an overcomer. Jesus did everything to get the power of God into you 
and to me so that we don't have to just say, oh, poor me, I'm just a victim here. Nobody can help me. Nobody cares. It's wrong. God cares. God's there. His Holy Spirit is there to help you. And it's not his will for any of us to be a victim of our circumstances, but to be an overcomer. I'm so thankful that you're a part of Cinderella and that I have this time with you. And I just want to leave you with just one more thought. Deciding to do something about your marriage or about your situation, and maybe you've blamed others, deciding to do that is a decision. It's you can't do anything about what's out here, but you can do any, everything about what's in here. And I want to pray for you. I want you to know you are precious to me. And the counselors, they are waiting to be a part of whatever God is doing in your life and to help you get out of that trap of isolation. God loves you and there are answers for whatever kind of problem that you have. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to be with these dear ladies. And I proclaim over them right now that they can come out of this situation. They can be helped. They can bring strength to the people that they love and be healed in Jesus' name.